I can fully recognize that waiting to hear from the current commissioner is something we've been anticipating all week long. Yes, we put riveting and firm together in the same sentence, and it's calmly there. If you don't feel that this is the most exciting time to be doing energy issues, you need to do a little mental reset. Because right now, we are at a time where there is so much happening, it's so complicated, it's so exciting, and everyone in this room can make a difference in terms of, of making it better. Let me back up. I come from the state of Washington, and we've been known for a long time as having uh, leading policies on energy efficiency. You've probably heard it a dozen times today, but the, the energy we save is the cheapest energy there is. We put in place a building code back in 1990, 1990 that saved an unbelievable amount of energy in the last 20, 21 years because of the fact that the buildings go in place, they stay there for a long time, and efficiency just plain makes sense. But now, along with some of my colleagues, I'm with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and we have a front view over the wholesale electric uh, market in this country and, and some of the policies that relate to the infrastructure development. And the markets are the key, in my opinion, to getting the new technologies out, things that we see today, things that haven't even been imagined yet. We need to make sure that customers have the opportunity to make choices and to be able to incorporate a lot of the new ideas and technology at an individual level. If they're given that opportunity, they'll make the kind of choices that truly can transform our society and our energy consumption. Well, we're doing a number of things at work that are trying to make this happen, not only to focus on developing regional electricity markets, uh, but also making sure that the policies are in place, as Scott mentioned, to get the electric grid, the bulk power system, uh, developed in a way that can handle more exchange of power, less congestion, and higher rates of reliability. Uh, these take the, the kind of investments that are very capital intensive, but ultimately are not a big part of the customer's bill in the end, and yet a lack of investment there can cost a lot more on the energy side. So one of our, our major priorities is to try and develop the grid, build it up, create the right financial incentives for these investments. These are homegrown investments, they can't be outsourced, they're good, high, high paying jobs, and we need to focus on making sure that that grid is built out. In the meantime, there are other things at the market level that can help facilitate some of the newer technologies. Now, honestly, we do have some challenges with intermittent generation and incorporating it into the grid. Those are not insurmountable challenges, but they're real. In a number of ways, we're trying to deal with that, not only expanding the markets themselves, but also as something uh, my colleague, Commissioner Norris, will talk about a little bit more, enabling storage devices to be better compensated on the grid. Storage is kind of the ultimate solution to a lot of our challenges. If we can effectively store electricity, other than in water behind dams, we can incorporate new technologies, uh, allow intermittent generation to be better fed out of the grid, and ultimately make a more efficient and uh, more reliable electric grid that, that benefits consumers in many ways. So, again, I will leave you with the message that, in my opinion, Focusing on market mechanisms and allowing market entry of new technologies is something that I strongly advocate for and I think you should be cognizant of. It's an exciting time to be doing these issues. Uh, thank you for your interest in all of them, and I hope that uh, you will come away even more inspired tomorrow than you were today to be dealing with these issues. Scott?